Hello and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dolman. Today we are trying something a little new and different. We are doing a podcast over Zoom and I am joined by Scott Stevens. Welcome, Scott. Well, good morning, Renee. Great to be here. It's always a little different circumstance, but it is good to see you uh, through the computer and uh, I'm sure it'll be a good conversation. Yes, and we are definitely practicing social distancing while we're in the same building. There's lots of distance in between your desk and my desk, so I think we're doing pretty good. I would say so as well, Renee. Okay, well, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. I know you have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, you, you know, I guess our topic today is obvious. It's going to be the COVID-19 and our response and incident and where we see things going. And I would just say for everybody in the community, we recognize these are challenging times. They're challenging for us. Uh, I'm sure they're challenging for our residents, trying to understand, trying to figure out what's best for our friends and family. And I guess my message that I'm going to start with and end with, if I can remember, is to look after one another, right? Um, I think we will get through this. I'm not sure when the middle or end is, uh, but I do know there's a lot of activity across the world and country and in our community trying to make the best of where we are and help people understand what's going on and what they can do to protect themselves and their families. So I would just, my initial message is look after those around you, even if it's a phone call or away from the car or walking down the street, uh, remember each other because we all are experiencing some levels of stress in our lives that we probably haven't seen, at least most of us in a while. So, um, anything else on, on that, Renee, that we ought to think about in terms of community members yet? I don't think so. I do want to let everyone know that we do have a website, jamescitycountyva.gov slash COVID, C-O-V-I-D. And on there, we have links to all sorts of community resources, um, stress management websites, lots of great stuff to go to. So please be sure to check all of that out and share it with your friends and family. Great. Well, I I guess I'll start with just our current situation, at least from, from where I see. We're uh, March 27th, Friday. Uh, seems like we've been in this about two and a half weeks now, at least as James City County has been talked about nationally and globally a little longer, but really been in our community for about two and a half weeks. And, um, you know, we're up to almost, well, just over 7,300 cases in Virginia uh, or that have been tested. 604 people of that have tested positive, so that's about 8% and 14 deaths across the state. Within our community and what we are really talking about in the Peninsula Health District is where we sort of roll into uh, the area that we are tied into. There have been 93 deaths, or excuse me, 93 confirmed cases and seven deaths. So we have half of the state's deaths within the Peninsula Health District with just Hampton, Newport News, back to James City County. And of those seven deaths, many of those have been here uh, of our residents. So it really is hitting close to home. And we are extremely concerned as your staff of knowing where people are so that we can help neighborhoods better plan. Uh, we can help our first responders be more informed and we continue to try to get information so that we can have the most up to date. Uh, there's some challenges with that. Some of that is the HIPAA laws and, and patient privacy. We certainly wanna respect that and, and we're not trying to publish information other than to know when we're responding to a house household that residents there are likely COVID related or not and so that we're better protecting our first responders and better prepared to serve the community as we come out and we're still pushing and working uh, with the Virginia Health Department we've gotten to know that staff much much better we have a gentleman who's uh, been their acting director for I guess almost two weeks now Dr. Steve Julian I will tell you he has been phenomenal to work with I have you know, almost daily conversations with him or conference calls he's on or texts from him and he is working really hard to get the information out to the communities so that we know how to react and protect uh, both our citizens and those first responders coming um, I do want our residents to know that we are having ongoing discussions uh, with neighboring localities. We're having almost daily calls with representatives within the peninsula. Uh, so we have the managers or, or chief administrator officers or county administrators, city manager, whatever our title, we've got that group there. We generally have our uh, fire chiefs and police chiefs uh, or emergency management staff. And we have our public information officials and others that are on these calls so that we all know what the localities within the peninsula are doing. And we have set up a regional operations center um, so that we can all have information flow into one place that reports out every day so that we all have a sense of what's going on, not just through these calls, but through a written document of what's occurring within the peninsula area. And so I do want to uh, let our residents know we are having that information flow very freely and a lot of good suggestions and a lot of discussions. Uh, and I think they've been very valuable, at least to me and to our staff in terms of our response. We also are having 
weekly calls two or three times a week with all of the Hampton Road localities, again, of the chief administrative officers from Virginia Beach to Chesapeake to Norfolk to Hampton uh, to Newport News to James City to Williamsburg and York. All of us, 17 localities, are participating in these calls. So we understand what each of us is facing. And quite frankly, Williamsburg and York and James City, we have been a little more adamant as, as this event started a few weeks ago. The other communities are now seeing some of those things. And I say we've been more adamant. We've had more to share because we had cases in our community first. And that's not a, a, a thing that I'm excited about. It's just the reality of where we've been. And so we've had to deal through a lot of these challenges of information flow and thinking about first responders and what it means to them. And these other localities are catching up to that. And so we're talking about sharing good ideas. What are we doing for first responders? What are we doing for our employees? How do we continue to serve the community? And I have found those calls while lengthy sometimes to be a very good use of my time in terms of information and making sure that we're not out there on a limb by ourselves. We really are as a region in it together and, and we're working well together. Um, I will tell you, our, uh, uh, I know Renee, you and our communications uh, team throughout departments, and we have quite a few people working on communication have done a really good job of pushing information out. It's just a lot of information. And so those that have access to our website and social media, that's probably an easier way in terms of getting regular updates. For those that don't, we did establish a phone line where you can call in and get some information on a daily basis. Uh, I'm sure Renee will share that number as we get. I've asked her if we get to the end of the call or the end of the podcast that we'll share what we can in terms of numbers so you don't have to jot them down as we're talking through. Um, but those are, are things that we're doing. And we are moving to some print media so that those we're missing through maybe a phone call, maybe a um, uh, website and social media that you would have some opportunity as you're out doing some grocery shopping that we all need to continue to do just at a, a safe distance from one another and washing our hands and all of those kinds of things. We still need to make sure we're getting information to you. So uh, I want to let you know those are ongoing efforts and the community has given us a lot of suggestions. We appreciate that and we welcome your suggestions and would encourage those uh, to continue to come on during, during this crisis. So, um, you know, for our uh, Renee usually has some questions when I'm in the office with her, but I can see her smiling at this point. I'm sure she'll interrupt me as she has questions or things to interject. Well, I'm going to go ahead and interrupt then. Right. We, um, on the social media, we are on both Facebook and Twitter. We do messaging throughout the day. We're looking at the Virginia Department of Health, Virginia Department of Emergency Management, the CDC, the World Health Organization, we are looking at all of the things that they're sharing every day. There's so many messages and we're trying to go through and find some of those great messages and share them with our citizens as well. So you'll definitely want to go online and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. We also do a five o'clock news release that we send out every day, seven days a week, that will just let you all know of any new updates or changes that have happened since the last five o'clock update. And I think that that's a great way for us to stay connected with our citizens. And this is different and uncomfortable for all of us. We're used to being able to be all together, but you know, it's something that as a community, we're gonna make it through. And we are just, you know, doing it the job that we think that we are able to do at this point. So if there's anything that you all are wanting from us that we're not providing, please give us a call. I'm going to go ahead and give my cell phone number right now, 757, I have to look it up, 757-272-3337. Please leave a message if you call because I'm running around and I may not be able to take the call when you're actually calling. So leave a message and I will get back with you with more information. All right. That concludes Great. my interruption for now. Well, Renee, I, I appreciate that. I, I will tell you, you know, you, um, supplies and those kinds of things, I don't want to get uh, too far in, but I will tell you, I talk with Chief Ash on a regular basis in terms of fire and EMS. We are okay supply-wise in terms of protective equipment for our first responders, but it is in short supplies. It's short supply within our Hampton Roads region within the state of Virginia, and then nationally. There are uh, supplies moving, but it's just a lot of need across the country. And so we are doing what we can to preserve what we have and make good use of that. And we have placed orders. I think that'll all catch up, uh, but we're all a little bit on edge until we get that first shipment again. So we, the, the supplies are there, at least on our side of fire and EMS throughout the region, but we're all concerned about that. We talk about the hospitals. They're concerned as well. We're talking to them on a daily basis. They're giving reports. They're still able and feel good about their staff, but they're concerned with supplies as well. So again, those things, 
I do think the manufacturing in our community will catch up, but there's still a long, well, I say a long way, some work to be done to get us back to where all of that is flowing well. Um, testing, um, that gets, uh, seems to be more and more available. I hope that will continue. I think there'll be some blips in that. I know uh, Sentara's had some drive-through testing here in the Williamsburg area. They are not doing it, as I understand, this week. Um, they are down to one location and just trying some a different area uh, back in Hampton just to sort of focus in an area they hadn't been as focused in. I hope they'll be back with the drive-through testing in the coming weeks, and we will share that information as it is made available to us. You know, from the, the very beginning of this, we talked about employee safety and social distancing, not only within uh, the community of going to the grocery store and those kinds of things, but to keep our workforce, number one, safe and healthy so they can do the job. Um, and that is an ongoing effort for us. Uh, we've had some 850 uh, positions, uh, mostly full-time positions. Um, 450 or so of those have to come to work right? Your police, fire, our general services, folks mowing the grass, folks doing maintenance on our vehicles, folks cleaning our buildings, uh, some of our building inspection staff, some of those folks to do their job have to come to the office and they continue to do that. We have taken measures in the office of better cleaning, more frequent cleaning, trying to space people out if they're in the office, moving, uh, not necessarily bringing everybody into a building to have a meeting where we might have done that in the past. We're doing that at, via conference calls or phone calls or smaller groups. Uh, we are doing things where we used to have four people in a vehicle going out to do something. We're now trying to reduce that to one or two so that we're spreading our staff apart, trying to reduce their exposure to one another. I think the risk is very low when they're out mowing grass, but I think the risk is higher for them when they try to put four of them in a truck, which is what they would have normally done. So those are things that we're constantly working on and trying to follow best practices for our employees, one, to keep them safe, and then second to be it so they can continue to do their job. We have pushed 400 and some employees really into a telework situation. Uh, we were maybe, uh, I say, ahead of the curve a little and that our social services department had been uh, piloting a telework program for us over about the past six to nine months and had very good success with that. We have pushed a lot of our staff and I really do wanna compliment our staff for all these changing situations we're putting them in and being flexible, whether here at work or whether at home, to continue to do their jobs to serve this community. And, and for me, my goal is to keep doing the work for the community and expect our staff to deliver, whether they're here or at home. And if they're gonna get paid, they've gotta do their job. And so I think our staff, might, well, I know they recognize that. I know they're working towards that. And my commitment to the community is we're gonna do all we can to keep our staff employed so that we can serve you because the business at hand needs to go on. Construction still needs to continue. We still need to be moving uh, things forward. You're still gonna have issues within the community with recycling or other things. And so we still want to be here to provide a response and a service, even though it might be that when we show up, we wouldn't shake a hand. We might just speak from a vehicle or, or keep our distance, so to speak, from uh, one another as we're moving through the community. But our goal is to be here to look after our employees and to look after you commu uh, the community members as well. Uh, we do have a few employees in quarantine. That changes from time day to day as we have an exposure or a possible exposure. We are either sending our folks home or trying to make arrangements for that. That'll be an ongoing continuing cycle, uh, I believe, for the coming weeks or months. Um, but it is what, something that we are committed to making sure we keep our employees safe. So um, I think from, from that standpoint, I, I want to say I'm really, really proud of the group of people working for James City County and their attitude and their, their uh, hopefulness and looking for the future and doing their job. And, and again, more of that to come, I'm sure. I am uh, going to interject. You had mentioned right. recycling. Recycling has been a common topic on the podcast. The recycling folks do want us to make sure everyone knows that they are still collecting curbside recycling on their normal schedule. No changes to that. Um, but it's key that you have your bin out or your cart out at the curb at seven o'clock in the morning. I know that everybody's schedules are completely all mixed up and we've gotten a lot of calls about missed collections when in fact then we learn that it's because the cart didn't get out until eight or nine and those trucks are rolling first thing in the morning so we need to make sure carts are out at seven. Right. Well, thank you, Renee. A couple of things. Our, our board of supervisors have had several meetings to this event, and we've spaced them out. They've they've been very concerned with the social distancing piece and being safe as well for them and for others. We've had some remote call into that, and I think that'll continue going forward. One action they did take, so the community knows, is they've reduced convenient fees of paying the county. So if you're using a credit card, that three percent 
or 2.95% fee that we have had, and it is a fee to the county, we are going to absorb that and pay that fee for you so that if you're if you owe us $50, you're charging your credit card will be $50 and it won't add that additional 2.95% fee. And that should be on all county uh, interactions. So if you have questions on that or don't find that to be true, let us know. It took a day or two to get all our softwares changed, but I think we've done that at this point and that should be in place. Uh, the board's been very concerned about impact on budget. And so what I have shared with them is we are holding expenditures, meaning we, we've had a number of things in the last three or four months of the year that we had not awarded. Uh, we are not going to make contract awards on things that aren't critical, things that are studies, things that can wait. Uh, we've asked departments to go back through and we're assembling a list for uh, the board to see. And it will be in terms of millions of dollars that we're putting on hold, so to speak. It doesn't mean they go away but it does mean that they probably won't get done during this fiscal year, which for us goes through June 30th. We're not hiring new employees, or at least we've limited that to critical positions. Um, and so we'll evaluate those as we have vacancies. And I do want to commend our departments for turning to pretty quick this week and developing that list. Uh, so that'll be an ongoing effort. We're going to do some revenue projections uh, and talking with others, uh, sales tax, those kinds of things definitely will be less than what we had projected a year ago. And so we'll have a little more information to share in the coming weeks uh, with the community and our board and our elected officials or the board of supervisors. So uh, very concerned about that. I think we'll be okay for this fiscal year, but it comes with some changes to how we're operating. Uh, budget for next year, our FY21 budget uh, was to be produced today. Uh, we have our staff finance from uh, Financial Management Services have been working diligently to put it together. They have actually have the document together today, uh, but rather than release it today, they have they've done this in a, in a fairly a little different scenario and so under some different stressors uh, the finance director and I really talked about delaying our release of it until Tuesday give us a chance to just take a slight break over the weekend come back to it Monday and Tuesday and just make sure we've got it finalized so I do apologize for the delayed release I think the rest of our schedule that we had published in terms of public hearings in April and May will still go on We've got to work through how we do that. Is it remote participation with the public or do we have some way to let one, make sure the, the community is heard, but two, make sure we're safe. And so those are the things we're trying to work through and whether the board, um, I think as we get closer to our April uh, meeting with the board of supervisors, we'll make a determination. On, are we in person? Are we doing it remote? And then how do we let the public be involved in those conversations as well? So more to come on the budget, but it should be out uh, Tuesday. I guess that will be April first, I think. Uh, I think April 1st is Wednesday. All right. Think. Well, then Tuesday be the 31st. Thank you. That'd be March 31st then, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, I'm going to double check that, but yeah. Well, very good. Um, you know, Renee, I guess for me, I think that's all I have in terms of where we are in the situation. Um, you know, what I said in the beginning is it really is a challenging time. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't necessarily seem to know that. You know, it's springtime here. It's a beautiful time in our community. Even with the social distancing, uh, you can get out and if you can ride, you can ride and change the scenery, right? That sometimes helps if you feel like you've been cooped up in your, your home or in your neighborhood. I wouldn't encourage you to get out and shop. I think you ought to limit that so your exposure uh, to touching doors and being close to people in aisles and stores is reduced. So only do the shopping that you must do. But I do think it's you have the opportunity to get out and move around some. We are maintaining our parks in terms of access to them for those that may not have a place um, where they live in terms of trails or other things. My goal is to leave those open, but it will really depend on the community. You know, we, we are breaking up groups. Uh, in fact, right now the groups are very uh, cordial and willing as we ask them to disperse, to, to disperse. Uh, but the order from the governor is 10 people. And so that doesn't allow you to play soccer or basketball, or probably not, we've closed tennis and pickleball and other things just to limit and not get to that group of 10 and trying to keep people safe. So we would encourage that. Uh, we are at this point have the beach expected to be open in a limited capacity. Uh, and we are worried about that because with the warm weather coming, uh, I think we'll have more and more people that want to come there and spend the day. I think we'll have some different requirements at the beach if we're able to keep it open. Uh, many other communities have closed their beach. They just didn't believe that they could, um, control it in a, in a safe manner. And so we are still evaluating that, but my hope is that we can allow Jamestown beach to be open, but on a very limited and, and different type basis. It won't be a place that we're encouraging people to come to and spend the day. You need to come in and do your time there and in an hour or two rotate out so that we can allow more people in because it will not be the capacities you've seen in past years. We just, that 
is not safe in the current environment. So uh, we're here. I guess the message, we're here. Look after each other, your friends and neighbors. You never know if the call you make to your neighbor made the difference in their life that day. And so I would just encourage all of us to do more of that. I know I'm talking to my friends and family more than ever, trying to reach out and just have that phone call, if nothing else. And I would encourage, you know, all of us to do that, to look after one another. We will get through this. I have no doubt. I'd like to tell you it's coming sooner, but I don't know that yet either. Uh, but um, as we go through these times, we'll work to keep you informed. And certainly we're looking after what we believe to be the best interest of the community in this ever-changing, evolving kind of event that we're in. And it is that. It's been a lot of information, having to make a lot of decisions based on most of what you need, but maybe not all of it. And we'll continue to, to do that to the best of our ability. All right. Well, Scott, as you know, I'm only going to ask one fun question because I don't have my list with me, but my question is going to be, once this is all over, what are you looking forward to being able to go and do again? Um, you know, Renee, it's been strange that, you know, all of my life and I'm 50 something now, actually 53, uh, you shake hands with people. Right. Right. And I never thought that was a big deal, uh, but this whole two and a half weeks of not, um, being able to shake people's hands and, and instead of sitting sort of next to them at a table, we're sitting across. I think it's really that being able to get a little closer to people and, um, not invade their space, but sort of get back to what is normal and maybe, um, Maybe there'll be something in between what was normal and what we're doing today, at least I hope. But I think that's what I'm, I'm after getting around people. I generally like uh, talking to people and seeing their reactions. Uh, we're doing a lot of conference calls. Mm -hmm. and, and while that shares information, and I think it's fine, it's not the same as being in the room with them and seeing how they're reacting to what's going on. So, so I think I look forward to that social interaction with people in the same room versus uh, well, this isn't a bad format on Zoom, but it's not the same as being in the room. So uh, it's just that gathering again with friends and coworkers and folks you like being around. All right. Well, Scott, thank you so much. Absolutely. I, again, we're going to flow or share whatever numbers and website information we can share. And uh, Renee, thank you for doing the job and pushing the information out and message to the community. We're here for you. Call us. We're still working and we'll try to get answers to your questions or meet your needs. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please go online to see our website. We're at jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast. And there you're going to be able to find all of our episodes as well as a form that you can give us some feedback, show ideas. We would love to hear from you, especially now. We would really love to hear from you. So looking forward to that. Also be sure to subscribe. That way you will be sure to never miss an episode. So that's it for now. And we will talk with you next week.